In this video I'm going to give you an overview of your options for changing an image into an embroidery. So there are a number of options in the Banana software for doing this and they have their own pros and cons associated with that. Changing an image to an embroidery is not as simple as just clicking the image and pressing a button and turning it into an embroidery. You do need to understand a little bit about the embroidery process, the fact that we're not printing something, we're actually stitching something onto a fabric that has uh, movement in it. It's not stable like a piece of paper when you print on it. Um, so you've got things such as pull compensation to worry about, um, the type of fabric, the stabilizer and all that sort of thing as well. So you need to understand a bit about the embroidery process to decide which is the best approach for digitizing. And you need to understand a little bit about the manual digitizing process to understand what's happening with your auto digitizing tools and whether or not you need to, um, whether you or not you can get away with just auto digitizing or whether you can have to manually digitize the whole image or whether you can use a combination of both. Now, as I said, this video is going to be an overview only because the subject is vast and I do have an in-depth course available um, on my website that goes into great detail about this process and uh, both auto digitizing and manual digitizing and so if you want to take this further you can access that course I'll leave a link below. Now the images I've got here which I used in my previous video on loading an image which I'll also put a link below if you haven't seen that um, I have got a bitmap on the left and a vector graphic on the right and I talked about the differences between the two in that the bitmap has pixels and the vector graphic does not so it's a lot cleaner. These images are very simple images and this is the sort of image that is easier to digitize than a more complex image um, and as I said that's another topic altogether. You, um, once you understand the basic tools you can then understand whether or not they're going to be usable with different images. So we'll start with these basic images. Now as I said there are auto digitizing tools available in the software and there are manual digitizing tools. I do a lot of manual digitizing because auto digitizing has its limitations but it can be useful sometimes and can be useful as a starting point and then to save some time and then some adjustments made with manual digitizing afterwards. So that all depends on the type of image you've got, you've got to, to work with as I said. So let's have a look at the very first option you have when you've loaded your images. If you've loaded your images into Art Canvas as I have here um, and I'm in Art Canvas, you have got a quick convert option up here which basically just allows the software to look at the image and decide what stitch types, um, what areas to stitch and um, reduces the colors to a manageable level etc. So you've got no control over this whatsoever. It'll do it all automatically and sometimes it does a good job and sometimes not as I said depending on the image. So let's have a look at the vector image first. So if I select that because I don't have to convert the whole everything that's in Art Canvas I can select individual areas and objects to convert. So I'm going to just convert the vector graphic first. So we'll click on the convert button up here which is in the top toolbar and it will go through to um, embroidery canvas and it's done the job. Now I'm in not in true view so if I click on true view show true view up here I will actually see the embroidery looking like stitches and it's not done too bad a job at first look. 
Okay, so let's have a closer look. Down here at the whiskers is out the first problem I see. It has is actually stitching this pink highlight area after the whiskers. If we look in the color film, there is the pink highlight area, and I'm in individual objects here, so I've got some little tiny objects of this pink so it's tried to leave a gap around the whiskers rather than have the whiskers stitch on top and other than that the actual interpretation of the image is pretty good the problem with this convert tool is that it doesn't take into account the pull um, of the stitching and as I said, it looks at the individual colors in the image and creates objects the size of those color blocks. Generally speaking, you need some overlap in your objects of embroidery so that you don't get any gaps when you're stitching. If I go at back out of True View again, click off so nothing selected, and we zoom in here. Um, where can I find a contrasting color down here with the black and white probably better it has actually stitched that white if I select the white if I can find it there we are it has actually stitched that white over the pink which I'm quite impressed with but the black if I zoom in is just barely going uh, overlapping the pink it has applied the standard 0.2 pull compensation um, which is really not enough for for when you're doing this because if you're manually digitizing you would create an overlap manually yourself as you go and then the pull compensation would be applied on top of that so the software's recommendation for when you're digitizing with any of the auto digitizing tools is to increase the pull compensation. So I will go back to True View, select the whole design because I want to increase the pull compensation on everything. If I right click on, I can go to the object properties and in there, I can't see the fill type or anything because I've selected multiple objects with different fill types. But I can go to the effects and this will bring up the pool compensation under the others tab. And if you, there are recommendations here. And so 0 0.0.4 is recommended for auto digitizer and the magic wand. So we're going to change that to 0 0.4. And if you look at the embroidery as I do this, I'll just zoom in a little bit closer. There we go. Um, that's, I think you'll notice it now if I change that to 0 0.4 and I click apply watch the watch the embroidery you would have seen that it increased the width it basically bulked out the stitching in the direction of the stitch angle of each of the objects so now we've got a little bit more overlap so we may or may not get some gaps depending on um, for instance this large pink area has is quite a large area so there would be more pull in that than a smaller area like the nose um, you can also see in the pink area here it has left holes where the cheeks are the eyes are and the nose is so if those holes weren't there if these objects stitched on top you wouldn't get any gaps at all um, the whiskers could be moved in the color film so that they stitch on top and we could make this border all one object instead of um, several little objects so there's there's some tweaking that could be done but overall it's a it's a good starting point I'll just close that and I'm going to undo and undo till I get back to artwork canvas there we are now let's have a look at what happens with the JPEG if I click the convert tool okay I didn't even get a pink I got a gray the white didn't digitize some of the whiskers didn't digitize that's because with those pixels the the areas of solid color aren't really as clearly defined I haven't got the highlights um, so it doesn't work really well 
for a JPEG with lots of colors. However, if you've got an object that's just one single color, let me undo back here. If I had just an object with a single color, let me just create a shape here. I'll just create a heart and I shall take the outline off by right clicking on the X and fill it with red. That didn't work. I'll right click on the X again. There we go. The outline's gone. So now I've just got a, a heart with no outline, just a red color and I click on the convert button. I get this lovely heart really quickly. So this is excellent for single color shapes. Um, lettering even will convert generally in um, quite a good way with the convert tool. Okay, let's move on to some other tools. So I will undo back again. Now I'll click off. I'm going to delete that heart actually. So I'll undo till that goes. All right. Now the next option you have is the auto digitizing tools in Embroidery Canvas, which give you more control. So you've had very little control with the Convert tool. So it has its purpose for certain things, but it's not um, foolproof. So it's not for every con every image. The auto digitizing tools in Embroidery Canvas only work with JPEGs or raster files I should say so a PNG or a JPEG they don't work with vector graphics so I'm going to select this vector graphic and delete it now um, because we don't need it for the next bit all right so we've got a JPEG here and let's go through to embroidery canvas so we can access those auto digitizing tools and I can't see my image, so I need to come up here and click on the Show Bitmaps tool to see it. Okay, so Auto Digitizing is in the Auto Digitize toolbox in the toolboxes. And you need to have the image selected if you want to use the Auto Digitize or the Instant Auto Digitize. If you want to use the magic wand, you select the tool and then select the image and you'll be given different ways to um, deal with it. So I'm just going to left click on the image. Now I've got my auto digitize tool available. So I'll left click on that. Now a dialogue will open. So here's where you have your first bit of more control than you had with the convert tool in that you can reduce the number of colors yourself to whatever number. So in this case, six colors would cover this image. Um, so I'll go six colors and go OK. So I just reduced the colors. It did actually pick the colors I wanted. So that process was OK. Um, I can then decide whether it, the software has decided that this is going to be a f these are going to be fills these areas and this area the black is going to be a detail um, however we've got we've got a black eye as well as whiskers so do we want the the black to be details over on the right hand side we've got a choice of thread color matching um, and then what we want for our details so the details are going to be a satin fill so if the details were a satin line or a center line, which you've got those options, you wouldn't get a good result in the eye. So I'll leave it on satin fill. Um, I'm not going to do any outlines. You could choose to outline the objects and I'm not going to put a border around. So I'm going to go OK. Again, we lost the whiskers. Um, they weren't wide enough. To create a satin fill we've got a satin fill for the eyes which i probably would have liked a step fill for the eyes but we had did have a bit more control i left the white in because we've got the whites in the eyes and if i'd have deleted that color then um i wouldn't have got the background uh sorry i wouldn't have got the whites of the eyes i would have not i would have been able to avoid getting a background but it's easy enough to remove the background objects after you have digitized just simply like that if I hide the image you'll see that that part of the background's gone then I need to select this part and delete that 
and there'll probably be some travel stitches some white travel stitches somewhere there's one so that runs across from the white background to the eye we don't need that anymore so we'll delete that um, there's another one there we can delete and another one there so as you can see if you know a bit about manually digitizing you can clean this picture up and then you could actually create your own whiskers in here however you've got gaps here where the whiskers intruded into here they didn't actually make a hole but they've made the shape if I go to the reshape tool of the pink outline um, you can see the nodes following around the area of the whiskers which I wouldn't like so you would have to remove those nodes reshape that area again you've got the problem of the holes so you have to change your pull compensation so there are ways to improve the design but you do need to know about all the different tools I'm going to undo that back to our JPEG image show the image again there it is and as you can see I'm going to undo that image artwork preparation as well so that we get our whiskers back all right there's an instant auto digitize so if I select the image it must be selected because it's available ah no if I have to undo one more time because that was the image preparation all right now I'll go back to embroidery canvas auto digitize and oh it is available because I've got it selected yep uh, not selected it's not available select it it's available if I click on the instant auto digitize it basically does what the convert tool does so um, this would you would use that if you loaded your image straight into embroidery canvas so that you wouldn't have to go through to artwork canvas to use the convert tool so that's why that is there undo that okay now the next objects as I said are the magic wand tools and these are quite a lot more useful in many ways because you've got even more control so the magic wand if I left click on that if I bring that over the image you get this little line with a, a um, cross through it you need to come over to the image and click on the image and then you get this same preparation tool now last time I talked about reducing the colors manually to six you could also merge colors here so I could select this pink color here hold my control key down and select this pink color here and then click on the merge button and that would merge those two pinks into one and you could go through all your colors and do that to get the color combination that you want in your image so there's more control there there's also a cartoon processing that you can play around with there's minimum color area and minimum line minimum line length there's lot, all sorts of tools on here I haven't got time to go into the all the tools in this video um, so I'm actually going to just reduce the colors to six again and go okay so now I've got six colors I've lost the whiskers again though so as I said you need to play around with that um, that minimum color area etc would help with that now I can actually just go in and I can actually choose what sort of fill I want and what color before I go in and click on any area so the hatched areas are the areas that the software has detected that are one solid area as you can see the out the um, background is areas too so I don't need to digitize the background now so, because I don't want it so um, that's one thing that you won't have to have to delete by using the magic wand however um, I'm going to undo again because there are some other tools that are even better so we'll undo undo and go back to embroidery canvas so our image is not processed in any way at this point in time go to the auto digitize tools I'm going to use the magic wand fill without holes for the pink area so that I don't have any holes where the eyes and cheeks and nose are so I'm going to go magic wand fill without holes and I will still get that image preparation box up again because if the image is not prepared it doesn't know where the areas are now when I uh, let me just try something here minimum color area is 
one square millimeter I'm going to I can't reduce that anymore so I'm not going to pick up those whiskers whatever I do here um, so I'll just reduce that to six again and enter okay I will have to put the whiskers in later now when I use the magic wand fill without holes and click on the pink area you can see I get a pink area over here with no holes where the eyes cheeks and nose are then I can use the magic wand to do the eyes and I will get my mesh again for the black part of the eye I want to fill and I want black so I select my color and my um, fill down here find the black area and left click and left click on the other black eye I'd like a satin line for the whiskers maybe or maybe I'll digitize them later with just a running stitch um, I can do these parts of the inner ear here so I need to find a color that's kind of yellowish let me just find a warm yellowish color oh, let's just use this orangey yellow and so I can click there and there and on the cheeks for the nose was a gray color wasn't it so let's pick a gray color and that was satin stitch so I can click on the nose so as you can see you can build your design up with much more control this way where you don't want too much layers of stitching over the top of each other you can select an area for instance the black eye and you can go into the edit toolbox and you can remove overlaps and if I go up in my toolbar you can now see there is a hole under the eye the difference between having the hole to start with and the remove overlaps tool is that provided you've got your margin of overlaps set in your settings so if I click on the settings and go to the remove overlaps tool it should read one millimeter by default you can increase that to 1.5 if you want more overlap you can reduce it um, one is usually ample in most cases and go okay then you will actually have some overlap more than you would have with the 0.2 millimeter pull compensation applied but I would still go in and apply the bigger pull compensation particularly for this large area of the face so as you can see you can gradually do some of your design at least with the auto digitizing tools let's go back to those the other auto digitizing is the magic wand center line so if I click on that I can come over to the whiskers this one here and make sure that the hatch is showing over that whisker and left click and now I will just get a single line of stitches through that shape even if it gets thicker and thinner through the shape it won't matter I'll just get a center line of stitching the other option in there is the block digitizing tool and I would probably use that for the whites of the eyes so that I could set the angles as I go so if I get the white color and I find this area here it's actually put in the angles around there for me so the the stitching radiates out um, rather than if I don't use that if I just use the magic wand tool on the other white let's make it it's satin and it's white let's go to the other white and see if we get a different outcome ah yes so here's the difference between the block digitizing actually looks for logical angles that the stitching should be so in this case it's radiating out from the center the angle of the stitching um, whereas the ordinary magic wand will just have one single stitch angle and you would have to manually go in and put your angles so they're all a quick overview of the different um, auto digitizing tools and as I said you can use those to get a good start in your embroidery design you can then go on to use your digitizing tools um, so for the highlight down here for instance I could choose a satin and um, 
I'll choose my darker pink. This is probably a bit too dark, but I'll just grab this one for instance. And I need to get out of the auto digitizing, so I need to choose a digitizing tool. Um, and I'm going to use a closed object. So, as I said before, it's better to have a bit more overlap over your objects. So I'm going to go out of True View by clicking T on my keyboard or clicking on this Show Artistic View icon. And I can see the actual color underneath of the um, image then. And I'm going to go a little bit into the pink. And I'm going to just left click, right click, right click, right click right click. Now I could have done this with the auto digitizing and um, increase the pull compensation but I'm just showing you your options in this instance and it stops about here um, so I'll just stop it just before the whisker. So I've got full control here of the shape of this object. Now I'm just going on the edge because it's the outside and you can adjust the shape in the reshape tool too. So you've got absolute full control of the stitch type and the shape and the area and enter. So that is a satin object. If I go to true view, it only has one, one angle as um, we didn't use the block digitizing tool. We used the closed object tool, but I can go to edit and I can add stitch angles. So here I can put in an angle there and make the stitching radiate around. Okay, so that's a much better result. So I hope that you see the potential of using all of the tools in the software and not just expecting to auto digitize an image and I hope I've given you an understanding of the um, pros and cons. Um, as I said before I have a course on my website that goes into great detail about manual digitizing, auto digitizing, um, a number of other things. Let me just bring it up. Okay so here we are on my website and I'll put a link to this page down below. Um, this is my Beginners Benina Designer Plus version 8 course 1. It is $80 but there's a lot of information in this course. So if you're an absolute beginner and you learn better by watching videos, this is something for you. Um, of course you don't have to do this course but you could work through the manual page by page and learn the software that way by trial and error but I think you'll find that this will get you started digitizing a lot quicker. So as I said you'll learn to digitize using auto tools and manually um, using images or freehand digitizing, editing existing designs, creating lettering and get a sound understanding of the digitizing process. There are a few projects in there as well. Um, don't worry too much about updating your software. If you've only just got it, it will be the latest version. But um, if you've had it for a while, you might want to check here that you have updated your software. Um, so it starts off very basic, opening and saving designs, uh, an overview of the workspace, um, hoops, thread colors, color film, travel toolbar and stitch player. Each of these areas have a number of videos in them so it's not just one lesson on each one. There's quite a bit. Some of them only have one but most have more. Fabric settings, um, then the digitizing tools, the main digitizing tools, group and ungroup, reshape tool, the selection tools, and then a whole section on working with images. So um, loading an image, digitizing the image, drawing in art canvas, and then I even go into the color photo stitch tools. Um, and then uh, there's an, uh, the same lesson on pull compensation, start and end points, art canvas tools, the power trace tool, projects so there's a notepad cover and a rooster tail top project to do editing designs lettering a whole big area on lettering fills and outlines so then i go into the different types of fills you can use and outlines you can use and how you can you know add your own personal touch to your designs and then i've got 
uh, a lesson on applique, both basic and advanced. So at the if you have if you're an absolute beginner, this is going to really get you off and running with your digitizing. So hopefully you'll find that useful. Um, and hopefully I've given you a good overview of what's possible, which is endless options in the software. <laughs> Thank you very much.